All right, now we're going to do something really fun. When we started the Steamboat Institute in 2009, we had the good fortune of having Tony Blankley agree to speak and serve as our conference moderator. Now, many of you may remember that uh, Tony was the press secretary to Newt Gingrich when he was Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives back in the 90s. He went on to a very distinguished career as um, editorial page editor of the Washington Times. He had a very popular uh, column, opinion, opinion column that he wrote. Um, he was a regular panelist on the McLaughlin Group. You would see him on different Fox News programs. Um, and Tony was always, always a cheerful, uh, hopeful voice for conservatism, which is what one of the things that endeared him so much to people, along with his delightful British accent, of course. Well, Tony and his wife, Linda Davis, came out for our first Freedom Conference in 2009. They enjoyed it so much, they came back the next year and the next year, and Tony really became the face of the Steamboat Institute. Um, Tony, by the way, found that title highly amusing. He thought that was quite funny. When Tony passed away early in 2012, we immediately knew we had to do something substantial and meaningful to honor his memory. And three years ago, in this room, we announced the formation of the Tony Blankley Chair for Public Policy and American Exceptionalism to, to honor this great conservative thinker. Um, last year, as you know, we awarded our first fellowship. The, the Tony Blankley Chair is to provide high profile recognition and uh, financial support. It includes a $10,000 stipend. Uh, this is to go to emerging conservative thought leaders who share the principles and ideals that were espoused by Tony Blankley and that are espoused today by the Steamboat Institute. And I think it's good to remind people what those principles are. It's limited, uh, limited government and fiscal responsibility, limited taxes, free market capitalism, individual rights and responsibilities, and strong national defense. That's what the Steamboat Institute stands for, and that's what Tony Blankley stood for. Our selection committee for the Tony Blankley chair includes former Attorney General Ed Meese, Steve Hoffman, who lives here in Steamboat and is a, a former uh, Department of Labor uh, official, Lauren Maddox with the Podesta Group, Tom McDevitt, chair of the Washington Times, John O'Sullivan, a British commentator and former speechwriter for Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, uh, John Roberts, who is author and TV producer of the McLaughlin Group, and of course, Tony's widow, Dr. Linda Davis. Well, last year, as I mentioned, we awarded the inaugural fellowship to Tom Rogan, who is a columnist for National Review, and I think since Tom was awarded the fellowship last year, many of you have become fans watching Tom and his various appearances uh, on TV on domestic politics and foreign policy. Um, he has become a regular panelist on the McLaughlin Group, sitting in the same chair that was occupied by Tony Blankley. We are very proud that in Tom's work, um, when he uh, has done TV appearances and his, his columns uh, online on National Review and, and other, uh, other online publications, features prominently Steamboat Institute Blankley Fellow, and we're so proud that in this way we're continuing the legacy of Tony and expanding the uh, national profile and reach of the Steamboat Institute. So, in recognition of Tom Rogan's contributions as our inaugural Tony Blankley Fellow, we are pleased to announce tonight that we are extending Tom's fellowship and $10,000 stipend for another year, and we're honoring him with the designation of Senior Fellow. Tom Rogan, would you please come up? I'll be very quick. I, uh, well, the first thing I should say is that as much as the British accent is useful, uh, having a State Department father doesn't allow you to transport American dentistry to the UK. So I have quite prominent canines, but apart from that, you know, the TV work has been good. And, and in the last year, it has just been fantastic to get to know so many of the people here who have supported in different ways and allowed me to continue doing this. And, and I think it's quite important difficult sometimes for people to understand that actually when you're starting out or you're relatively new to media, it's hard to make money. And the financial support is critical, but at the same time, the outspoken nature of the Steamboat Institute is also useful. I, in the last couple of days, people coming up to me and saying, you did a great job on this, but 
what the hell were you talking about on that? I enjoy that. It's good to have that back and forth. Um, but I'm always aware as well that as much as things are going well, uh, Tony, you know, that you have so much to live up to in, in his shoes. And um, I have his shoes, but I don't have, I'm not him. And you couldn't be him. And, and the nature of that I would just tell people is if you go on the McLaughlin Group website, uh, www.mclaughlin.com, type in Tony Blankley in the transcripts, and it will take you to every uh, show that he did. And just read some of the things he was talking about. The, the rotten political Islam, growth of extremist threats, uh, encroaching government, unreformed entitlements. Uh, I mean, it's just quite extraordinary. And, and as a final point, you know, the McLaughlin group is somewhere where there is a lot of controversy and people disagreeing. But the one thing I found that everyone on the panel uh, goes quiet for is when you bring up Tony, because he was universally respected and liked. Uh, and that, I tell you what, that doesn't happen on the McLaughlin Group. We argue even when the show finishes, so it's special. Um, the concluding thing I would simply say is thank you to everyone. And Gillian, who's uh, going to be the new Tony Blankley Fellow, uh, is just quite an extraordinary person in terms of, uh, I mean, she's the real deal. I mean, she's, she's been on the ground in Ukraine and Iraq. Uh, her reporting chops are quite extraordinary. And I would think keep an eye on her. Probably 10 years from now, she'll be running the Wall Street Journal. Um, but she, she really is, I mean, you'll get to know her over the next year, but uh, she, she takes it to another level. So, tribute to you, Jimmy. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, stay up here, yeah, stay up here. Sit or stay back here. Okay. And now to introduce the 2015-16 recipient of the Tony Blankley Chair for Public Policy and American Exceptionalism, I'd like to ask our board member, Dr. Matt Spaulding of Hillsdale College, to come up. Um, education and republic should form the character of its citizens to know the most important things about their country and its principles and to apply and uphold them in the work of self-government. To combine those two things is rare. To do so in journalism is damn near impossible. One of the reasons why we had to turn to a foreigner in Tom Rogan, <laughs> who does it very well. Our recipient tonight will do this as she continues her already promising career. She's from Wyoming, right next door. It's here for Wyoming. And she has a big family, and her parents are here this evening, right? Um, she started studying journalism in Cheyenne and had the good sense to transfer to Hillsdale College. <laughs> so those are, those are three big pluses. And she studied there American exceptionalism, or what we call political science, <laughs> especially focusing on world politics. Uh, she worked at the Collegian magazine, or the Collegian newspaper at campus, and she took our journalism courses. She was always tenacious, driven, got her stories. She was somewhat of a rabble rouser, I understand. Uh, Laura, this was not Dartmouth. This is Hillsdale College, mind you. <laughs> and she's really become a star of National Review. Uh, she's a fellow at Franklin College, Fra Fra the Franklin Center, the Independent Women's Forum, and she's already been ex exposed and working in foreign correspondence uh, in uh, Ukraine, Iraq, as mentioned, Hong Kong. She spent a year in China. Uh, writing about Christianity and persecution. She's a good investigative reporter at a time when that skill is lacking in today's media. She wrote three part series on how unions were controlling construction the, in the construction market in Philadelphia, and the federal government brought RICO charges against them, leading to several convictions. She's currently digging into, I, I, she'll have to explain this, I, she says she's digging into Donald Trump and Al Sharpton. There's a story there. There's a story there. Uh, her work has appeared in National Review, Wall Street Journal, Weekly Standard, Newsweek Japan, Washington Examiner, I could go on. She is energetic, intense, focused, and driven. Such young, well-educated talent directed towards the right ends will serve to do what James Madison once said, refine and enlarge the public views, serve our country and its principles, and inspire Americans to greatness. On behalf of the board of the Steamboat Institute, I am proud to give you the recipient of the second annual Tony Blankley Chair for Public Policy and American Exceptionalism, Jillian Melcher.
Thank you. So I think to be a conservative is in many ways to feel nostalgia, um, sometimes for a past that you've never experienced. And I have certainly felt that in the past few weeks as I've learned more about the life and legacy of Tony Blankley. Um, I knew already that as a writer, he was somebody who gave a voice to the voiceless, and that as a spokesperson, he was somebody that gave a better voice to people who already had one. Um, but I've also been delighted to learn that in addition to being a noble and articulate man, Tony Blankley was a lot of fun. I read of his sartorial splendor, of his puckish, if gentlemanly wit. I've read that conversations with him were best held over cigars and whiskey. And I've heard rumors that he cooked with the same passion in which he spoke, which meant that spaghetti sauce often ended up on the ceiling. But I think my favorite thing that I've read so far comes from Ed Gillespie, who wrote in National Review, my home publication. And he was describing in the 90s the sort of cutthroat political environment in Washington. Um, he described it as a zero-sum game where you would benefit by sneaking dirty pieces into the press um, and, and you know, cutting down other people, even in your movement. But here's, here's what Ed Gillespie said, and this really rang home for me. He said that Tony was different. He was not only brilliant in advising Gingrich on how to pursue his political and legislative goals through the media, he helped plant positive stories about rising Republican stars. He shepherded a flock of young press secretaries and communications aides. Politics as much as a trade and a profession, and Tony was a master of his craft, who was willing to share that mastery with journeymen and apprentices. I am so honored that the Blankley family and the Steamboat Institute have chosen me as the next beneficiary of this tradition. Um, I'm really enjoying the company of you like-minded people out here, and I look forward to benefiting from your wit and your wisdom over the next year. But I don't think it was only mentorship and leadership that defined Tony Blankley. It was first and foremost his humble service to enduring principles and values. He cherished limited government, limited taxes and fiscal responsibility, free market capitalism, individual rights and responsibilities, and strong national defense. Jennifer and Rick have led an organization around these values, and Tom Rogan has clearly done a phenomenal job writing in support of them. And I'm really thrilled to be working with the Steamboat Institute in the coming year as we continue to serve and pursue and defend these universal values that Mr. Blankley breathed such dazzling life into. And so while tonight begins with thick conservative nostalgia, um, for days gone by, let's also celebrate the bright future that I think we can create together. Thank you. Now we have one more really special piece of this that will only take a couple of minutes, and we have uh, Dr. Linda Davis, Tony Blankley's widow, would like to say just a few words. Hi, friends, family our conservative family, so this is the third year that uh, the seat next to me has been empty, but you all have helped fill the space in our hearts and uh, certainly in the cause for freedom. I'm thrilled, thrilled that Tom is able to stay on and that we have a wonderful um, conservative voice to join him and Jillian. I'm glad that your parents are here. Thank you for your kind comments about Tony. And I have absolutely no doubt that these two young professionals committed to the, the principles of the Steamboat Institute will be able to fill the shoes that Tony, <laughs> we all came to know so well. <laughs> And if Tony was here, he would say, thumbs up, Laura, his good friend. Thank you all very much. <laughs>